Have you ever wondered why when you're in Adobe Camera Roll or Lightroom and you press the black and white button, your color mixer now turns into a black and white mixer. Now, what happens here is you only get access to the luminance value of any given color. But when we turn black and white off, we get the color mixer back, which gives us not one, luminance, but three different attributes that we can edit in our color for our image, but we can't use those for black and white. What if I told you there was a little hack or a little trick that would allow you to get all the color tools in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom at your disposal when you're making your black and white images? So I'm going to give you a little preview here. If I hit this uh, basic black and white that I have created here, you'll notice that this image is now black and white. We have full access to all of the color attributes of the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the greens, etc. How you do this is actually with a profile, not a preset, but a profile. So in order to create this, we need to jump into Photoshop and create a profile so we can hack Adobe Camera or Lightroom into thinking that we are working in black and white, yet still giving us all of our color information. So I'm going to take this image, we're going to jump into Photoshop with it in full color. So I'm going to turn the black and white off. And I'm just going to say open. Now you can do this at home as well. I am teaching you how to do this on your own. All right. I've made many of these profiles in the past, and now I'm teaching you how to create this on your own. So essentially what you're going to do here is create almost any black and white conversion that you would normally do. Now, if you've seen my channel, you know that I like to use a gradient map. You've probably seen this video right here, which is actually a four step black and white process. You can use this four step black and white process here, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and take the gradient map and with the gradient map, I'm just going to change that to black and white. Now I've said this many times before, but one of the reasons why I really enjoy this conversion is because it gives my colors the attributes that they should get in their tonal value. It's a great way to convert to black and white. I'm not going to go into that here because I got a lot to go over here to teach you how to hack this. So essentially what you could do right now is put a curves adjustment layer under this gradient map. You could put a selective color layer under this gradient map. You can do anything you want to edit this image. The only thing that you cannot do, you cannot add any pixel value edits here, which means you can't paint on the mask. So for all intents and purposes to make this as simple as possible, let's just use the black and white gradient map without convoluting it. Again, if you want to go deeper, watch that four step black and white process. So at this point, what we need to do is create what's called a lookup table from this. And essentially what a lookup table is, is a lookup table takes the background information or all the color and tonal data that is available in the image. And it applies this gradient map on top of it. But when it does that, it creates this little encoded file called a lookup table that tells the program that is accessing that lookup table. Hey, these red pixels look like this with this thing on top. That's what a lookup table is. And that's that little cheater thing that we're going to use in Adobe Camera or Lightroom. So in order to do this, make sure you do not have a, a, an open layer, like a layer zero right here, because if you do, and you go to file, which is what we're going to do to create this and go to export and then go to color lookup table, it's going to say could not export color lookup tables because this document has no background. So what we need to do is we need to go up to layer new. And then we're going to make a new background from layer. So we've got this layer selected, this layer zero selected. It's now going to create a background layer. If you're coming right from Adobe camera Roll into Photoshop and it's not a smart object, you shouldn't have any problem with that at all. So this is how we make this. We go to file, we go to export and we go to color lookup tables. Now, what do I want to call this? We're going to call this uh, BW for YT. That way I know it's black and white for YouTube. Now, what I do here is I press control A to copy all of that data and then control C. Now, this is just for me because it makes it easier for me to handle uh, these lookup tables and what I did and where. And you're going to see that in a second here. Now, grid points, we want 32 at medium and we want this to be saved as a cube file and we'll press OK. It's going to ask me, where do I want to save this to? Well, since I'm already right here in my folder prepping here for this YouTube video, I'm just going to press control V right here. We're going to name this file name BW4YT, which is actually the same thing that I just copied and pasted. Okay. It just makes it easy for me. You can call it whatever you want, but I usually just copy and paste whatever I make it the first time because I'm going to carry it all the way through the process. You're going to see that in a second and we'll press save. So what we've just done is created that very small little intricate lookup table that says, Hey, any data that you see in any image that looks like this, change it to this style for black and white. 
That's essentially what we're doing there. These color lookup tables are very powerful, especially when we use them for color lookup tables. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that file, just drag it and drop it, that raw file, right back into Photoshop. It's going to open up an Adobe Camera Raw. Now, in order to make a profile, you cannot make these in Lightroom. You can only make them in Adobe Camera Raw. But then once you've made it in Adobe Camera Raw, you can use it later in Lightroom because it'll automatically be there because both of them read the same folders for profiles. So now what we need to do in order to make a new color lookup table profile is go to the preset section here. Press Alt or Option and click this little tearaway sheet, which normally, if you clicked it without holding Alt or Option, it would create a new preset, right? Well, this is what we're gonna do. Alt or Option, click the tearaway sheet. Now it says Create Profile, okay? So what do we wanna do in this profile? Like In this profile, I'm gonna leave it set to the Adobe Standard because that's predictable. That's what we set this up as. I'm gonna turn off all other settings that are in here. My tone mapping strength, I'm going to keep that at low or normal because that's going to be predictable. My look table is what the look table was based off of when I opened it into uh, Photoshop. So we're going to keep that as Adobe Color. Now, all you need to do is click where it says Color Lookup Table. Now, navigate to where that was. Mine, I already have navigated to the practice file or practice folder that I had. But remember, I named it BW4YT or Black and White for YouTube. So I'll just double click that. Now, in the name here, I'm going to change this. I already have it copied, remember? Control V, BW for YouTube. Now, where do I want to save this to? I'm just going to make uh, my user profiles for now and press OK. So, that is essentially how we have created our own color lookup table LUT profile that will trick Adobe Camera Raw into thinking that we are now working in a black and white image, but giving us all of our access to color. So, how we get there is we go to Browse Profiles. At the bottom of our profiles, we're going to see BW4YT. So I'll click that. That's essentially that gradient map that we made on top of our image happening at the very second on this photo. So how is this different than using the black and white feature in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom? Well, now let's take a look at some of the colors in this image. So I saw that the background here had a lot of red in the brick of the building. So now we not only can make that red darker, by moving the luminance down, we can also maybe make it more saturated so it's more potent and even alter the hue of that red to make that a little bit more potent. Let's see what that looks like with the oranges. Now with the oranges, we can make them brighter or we can make them darker, just like we could in Adobe Camera Raw's black and white processing. But we can also make that color a little bit more potent and more saturated to get more tonal value out of those oranges than we could with just the black and white or monochrome processing in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. As I move this over on the hue, we can separate out some of that color and draw it more towards the lighter or more towards the darker tones. We can go into our yellows. Same thing here, increase the saturation of those yellows. Looks like those yellows are happening down here. We can brighten those yellows up and look at that. Now we get some separation from our buildings while we're also increasing the intensity of those yellows and then maybe even modifying the hues of those yellows. Whereas if we were to go to Adobe Monochrome, which is the Adobe's black and white version of this, we would only get access to the luminance value of the color red, the luminance value of the oranges and the luminance value of the yellows, which if we were to go back to our profiles, we'll go ahead and close these profiles down and go down to the one that we just created. Look at the difference here. We can get a lot more tonal separation in our black and white processing when we make our own black and white profile first. This unlocks an incredible amount of possibilities in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom when you're working with your black and white images. Fair warning, you will get addicted to this. I know I did. Four months ago, I created over 200 black and white profiles that some of them made the cut, some of them didn't. And I ended up making a profile and preset pack for Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom that comes with 16 profiles that give you instant access to incredible black and white looks and then some presets that help push those black and white images even further. If you want to learn more about this profile and preset pack that I've created for you, go ahead and click this link right here. These new Noir profiles and presets are awesome. I know you're going to love them.